Hello and welcome to the Icons of the Realms One-Shot Challenge. Today we're talking about Snowbound, one of the lines of the Icons of the Realms mini-series. This box contains four randomly assorted minis, three of them medium or small, one of them large or, in this case, maybe even huge. I don't know what's in there, but the challenge is to uh, take one mini after the other and create from the minis a one-shot. A one-shot, an adventure to, to be played in four to five hours, all to its conclusion. So let's open it and see what we have. Something big in there. Okay. So this is what we got. There are three minis wrapped in plastic. We're going to look at them afterwards and look at this. What is this? <laughs> so this is a Warforged Titan. I have a feeling that this is not going to be a level one adventure. I'm now going to d and Beyond, and let's see what they can, can tell us about it. Okay, the Warforged Titan, a huge construct, lawful, neutral, also interesting. So, what we are going to take from this description is not usually the stat block. I need here the challenge rating, it's 8, okay. That gives us an idea what um, what uh, kind of players we want to send against our challenges. But let's look at the description. Warforged Titans are hulking constructs built to wreak paths of destruction through enemy armies. Some of the most feared combatants of the last war, Warforged Titans are barely sentient. There's just enough intelligence to follow commands. Okay, well... <laughs> But looking at it, not too surprising. This is a killing machine and nothing more, it seems. Let's see where this description is going to take us next. Legacy of Giants. In the age of giants, giant artificers built mindless war golems to aid them in the war against the quarry. Millennia later, some of these golems were unearthed by adventurers searching for the secret of that age and then turned over to artificers working for the dragon-marked houses during the last war. House Kenneth studied these designs and in the course of uncovering the secrets of the golems and giant artificers who made them, House Kenneth created the first Warforged Titans. Okay, so what can we take from this? This is interesting. Some of these golems were unearthed by adventurers. So um, we can either do the obvious thing and uh, just throw this against our players. That's quite obvious. But we can also say, well, perhaps this is... Well, what comes to mind is a guardian of sorts. Just standing there, still frozen in place and uh, creating the dread that it might awaken every second, but there's this door or entrance or whatever behind it, and the players absolutely need to go there. So this would be an option. It could also be found destroyed somewhere, or maybe not destroyed, but like this and it awakens when the players come in into some dungeon some room and it takes one swing at one character and then breaks because it's so old and it was demolished and it's rusty and whatever and it just breaks down and perhaps there's something inside it or the players stumble stumble upon this thing lying face down in the dirt just broken when they search it 
when they dare to go near it and they search it, they find that beneath it are scraps of cloth. And with some investigation and some reasoning, they find that this looks like uh, this, this could be a mage's robe, a torn, torn off of a mage's robe. And uh, if they dig deeper or if they move it over, they might find a spellbook. Spellbook of a mage, the one that fought this titan. And it was a very close call, so close that in fact, when the titan died, the wizard mage was almost exhausted. It fell over on the mage. So the mage could, a second too late, but uh, vanish from there via some sort of teleport. Uh, misty stuff, for example. But uh, some things got caught up because they were all already entangled with the Titan. And um, well, let's see, we have three options now. Finding it, fighting it, or finding it somewhere in, in a dungeon and it just bursts after one shot, or they just find it broken and something underneath. Let's see. I'm going to take of those things the next mini and we'll see what it, uh, which direction it brings us. <laughs> okay, well, it has to be a challenge, right? That's the title. <laughs> so this is a bully book. Let's see, I, I'm going to just type it in and see what it gives us. Okay, let's take the standard one. Bullywog. Bullywog. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Okay. Challenge rating is really low, so it's basically on the opposite end of our Warforged Titan. We remember it was challenge rating 8. Here we are at 1 fourth. So we need a handful of these things to be interesting. Usually, let's see. Life as a bullywog is nasty, brutish and wet. These frog-headed amphibious humanoids must stay constantly moist, dwelling in rainy forests, marshes and damp caves. Always hungry and thoroughly evil. <laughs> okay. Bullywogs overwhelm opponents with superior numbers when they can, but they flee from serious threats to search for easier prey. Bullywogs have green, grey or mottled yellow skin that shifts through shades of grey, green, blue. Blah, 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 crude armor and so on. So that's quite a lot. Let's read the next paragraph. Foul aristocracy. Okay, they consider themselves the right and proper ruler of the swamps. Okay, swamp may be our location. That's quite a strong hint. They follow an edict kind of sorts. Uh, subject to the whims and fancies of the leader. That might come in handy. We might have a leader. A stealth-styled Lord of the Muck. Oh, yeah. Grand sounding titles. So the thing, what I take from here is that they do not necessarily or not necessarily at once need to be a combat encounter. There may be something social about them. And uh, this might be a fork in the road. Let's see. I like forks. Let's see. Make great show, shows of bowing, debasing themselves before the superiors and endlessly vie to win, win their superiors' favor. Okay, fine. Two ways to advance. Murder its rivals. Criminal deed secret. Or it can find a treasure or magic item and present it as a tribute. Ooh. So I was wondering whether there's a mage that fought this thing and was almost smashed by it and could just teleport out of it and left something behind. So perhaps there's a band of bullywogs, whatever. And uh, the leader of that small band claims for himself the treasure, wants to claim because they see it, but they cannot lift the Titan. So perhaps 
the player characters might come in handy. Let's see, let's read on. Okay, it's more common for Bullywooks to stage raiding against caravans and settlements, of course. Okay, fine. Let's look at unruly diplomacy. Bullywooks love nothing more than lording of those who trespass on their territories. Okay. Next scenario. The player characters come in. They don't need to be that high level. Just low enough to be threatened by a band of bullywogs and high enough that the bullywogs wouldn't kill them right away. So level three and four perhaps and a band of bullywogs. And uh, so they say they're trespassed, but they may go free if they help recover the treasure. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, th that fits. The warriors attempt to capture intruders rather than simply slaying them. Captors are dragged before the king or queen. Mm -hmm. Bullywog of unusually large size. Forked and forced to beg for mercy. Okay. Okay, it goes ahead with the MacGuffin, but on a higher level, on the king level. That's fine but desperately crave the fear and respect of outsiders. Yeah, we know who our outsiders would be, don't we? Amphibian allies. Bullywogs speak a language that allows them to communicate over large areas by croaking like frogs. So we do have a scenario with these two minis. Let's see where it's going to take us over the next two. But right now there's something beneath that destroyed Titan and uh, these want to have it. Let's see. Next minute. There are two left. Oops. Here is the next one. Also a small one. And it is a... Huh. I really don't know. A duck lion? Ah, a griffin hatchling. Okay. The challenge continues. Griffin hatchling. Let's go to D&D Beyond. I guess we have to go to the griffin. This one. So that's better. Same thing. Griffins are ferocious, avian carnivores. We know that already. When they attack, griffins are swift and deadly. Blah, blah. Okay, horse eaters. <laughs> griffins hunting. Ah. Perhaps frog eaters? Griffins on the small pride, flying high over plains and forests near the rocky cliffside areas. Herd animals and horses are prey the crave of all, all others, but they also hunt and kill hippogriffs. When it spots horses, a griffin screeches to alert its pride mates, which descend quickly toward the prey. That's all about the horse eaters. Sky dwellers, griffins lair in high rocky clifftop areas or trained mounts. A griffin... I've got an idea. I'm not sure yet. A bunch of these creatures could, just as the player characters turn over the titan to recover the treasure, these things swoop in and pick up the treasure. Maybe one or, few, one or two of these uh, bullywogs. And uh, the player characters might now have to climb up to the griffins and either kill them or haggle with them again either social or combat to retrieve the the item but of course the griffins are going to have kind of a feud with these things so perhaps those want the griffins dead or especially the, the treasure recovered and these want the griffins want something else Perhaps they say, listen, you can have this if you go and kill the queen. Let's see. So here it says, once trained, a griffin is, fierce and the, uh, is a fierce and loyal steed. Being loyal could be crucial here. It bonds with one master for life, fighting to the death to protect that rider. A griffin mount retains its ravenous appetite for horse flesh and a wise master ensures that a griffin remains satiated with other prey when passing through civilized lands. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. We have 
a few ideas. Let's look at the fourth and last mini. This one here, that's a medium sized dark thingy. Um, okay. Cold Light Walker. Cold Light Walker, never heard of. Let's look. Challenge rating 5. Undead. Ah, I assumed as much. It did sound a little like uh, Game of Thrones, didn't it? Okay, Cold Light Walker. Some humanoids who died from extreme cold. Well, that's a different setting. But whose spirits languish in the mortal world become cold light walkers, burning with frigid fury at the meaningless meaninglessness of life. Their frostbitten corpses emit a spectral light so intense that mortal eyes can barely stand to look at them. They typically wear the clothing in which they died. Gods born horrors. Gods that personify winter create cold dead walkers as embodiments of winter's wrath. These hateful spirits that were denied passage to the afterlife are preserved in their current forms to remind the living how fragile life can be. When a cold walker, the cold light walker dies, its light goes out, leaving behind a frozen, inanimate corpse that can never be raised from the dead. Okay. So let this be let this be the objectives the players have to fulfill for the Griffins to get the treasure back. Griffins are loyal once trained. Okay, let's say the head the head of this uh, Griffin tribe. used to be trained and he used to have a master and then they had a very strong bond and there was some accident up high in the hills and uh, the master died and uh, because of some actions in the past the players will never know the master was turned into a cold walk a cold light walker so the griffin really desperately wants to release it from this curse but cannot do it uh, themselves the griffins cannot do it so they need the, uh, the player characters and they have they have something from player characters i'm really going to stick to the story here they have something from the player characters the player or at least that the player characters want and uh yeah i guess we have our one shot Okay, so let's wrap it up. Chronological from the perspective of the players. A group of players, four, five uh, players around the level of four or five, perhaps? Three, four, five, your choice. Are walking somewhere in the north through, through a swamp. It's rather cold already. Um, if you're playing Forgotten Realms, it may be uh, somewhere north, um, perhaps close to the spine of the world, some mountain range, because we need swamp and mountain range. So they're walking there, they have some, some object objective. Give them a MacGuffin to bring them from A to B, to make them go through, this, through the swamp, because it's for some reason a, a, a good route to follow. They're in the swamp and they encounter these frog-like thingies. A lot of them, say 12, and perhaps a few more in the bushes. And um, so the objective of these things is to make the player characters help them lift or turn over or whatever this thing, because they think there's something beneath it. And uh, that's the main objective. Well, if they don't, uh, if the player characters don't, if they just go and go ahead and kill, let it, let it be a fight. Okay, fine. Because uh, those frog things are confident enough to take the players on, um, but they would rather have 
something else. There's one of them uh, is a bit larger, that's the, the leader, and he wants to claim the treasure that he thinks is there somewhere beyond beneath that titan. Um, he thinks that this treasure is going to give him a good standing with their queen. So either this or they kill the player characters and loot them and wait for the next ones. So um, they're going to run and when at least half of them or so is killed. Um, and uh, either way the player characters are going to stumble across this guy here. So they may be wi with the... What's your name? <laughs> Sorry. Bullywooks? Bullywook. They may be with the Bullywooks um, should they have made a social encounter and uh, um, come to an agreement. Free passage for help for that one. So uh, let's stick with this one first. They go there, they find this, they find some means of looking beneath it. Yes, there's something shiny, there's something beneath it. And they kind of manage to lift this or roll over whatever this massive thing. And uh, they find it. Make, it. make it interesting, make it, as I said before, some torn cloth from a mage's robe. Make it perhaps a splintered magic staff. Um, with some runes to be identified as uh, some evocation wizard or something. Um, they may, fi may find a spell book, half burned, half crushed, half soaked in a swamp. Yeah, it's three halves, it's a big spell book. Um, something that's fairly usable to the player characters, not so much to these types. And let there be, let's say, a necklace, a nice shiny necklace. Should they detect magic? It's magic, of course. It's a necklace of this uh, wizard that, that vanished just uh, to somewhere. And uh, they want the necklace. But there are screeches in the air and right there a griffin attack comes. Three or four griffins come down there. They are going to th throw the spares. The players may do something, perhaps even kill one of those. But the thing is, the griffins catch the, the necklace. And uh, maybe for ease, so the players wouldn't hold on to it. Maybe, uh, so it would be a strength with a strength contest they could win because we need to get the movie, uh, get the story moving forward. Make this attack after the player characters handed over the necklace. Then the griffins come and they either take the necklace or they take the necklace with the bullywog hanging onto it and it just falls from some hundred meters in the air. So, And after attack, after the attack, they fly away. So there's a new situation now and the leader demands that the player characters have not fulfilled they uh, had to fulfill, meaning that the leader still doesn't have his necklace. And, you know, there's no good arguing with these creatures. Okay, so they insist that the player characters fetch the necklace from these damned griffins that are always constantly picking off the bullywogs for sport and also for eating. So uh, there's a new choice. Again, the same choice, basically, as before. The player characters have to fetch the necklace, the treasure, for them to have uh, to improve the standing or be killed on the spot theoretically so uh, if they are being killed on the spot um, well the player characters kill them have the necklace and uh, don't have the necklace but have the the spell book and may or may not pursue the griffins it was a magic necklace after all from a mage who killed a warforged titan so it might be interesting. And the spell book also gives some hint to the power they might uh, miss out on if they don't pursue it. So we might have the griffin scene, or they just walk away and the adventure is over. Um, going back, should, should they at the very beginning right there battle the bullywogs, they come across this thing just like that and they can... Uh, um, they can uncover the treasure, 
and the griffins will still come, but perhaps not attack. But either try to snatch it, I would make it the first thing, snatch it away. Should they succeed? Fine. Um, should they not succeed, they come, come down, try to be peaceful. Remember, they can talk. Uh, the leader is used to humans uh, or humanoids. And uh, they're going to post the quest right there. So the players are going to either have the quest there from the griffins or they go up um, to the griffins with the, the bullywooks being dead or not. So climb out to the uh, griffins, make that, let's say, a skill challenge. How do they climb up 100 to 200 meters um, mountain, the mountain range? Quite steep at uh, some spots and it's, it's going to be icy and chilly up there. And there are going to be the griffins. They're not going to attack because the griffins have their own agenda, but they're going to be to look menacing. So uh, let the players tell you how they plan to go up there and then let them approach the griffins. Remember, the griffins do not want to fight. They want to release their former master and friend from his curse. And they know they cannot do it themselves because of the bond they had, but the player characters can do it. So um, if they agree, they give them the necklace, no, no doubt. And um, they have to go hunt in the mountains. They, um, they are going to uh, give them directions. Of course, it's only at night. And uh, yeah, hunt this thing down and fight it. Let's have a look at the, again at uh, this um, cold light walker. Perhaps there's some interesting twist for the battle. Okay, as an undead, it has a lot of condition immunities, that's for sure. Um, damage immunity to cold, so this is going to be um, a little difficult in its own right. Oops, the cold ray is quite nasty. <laughs> so 25 hits here, 11 hits plus 14 hits. Oh, slam and cold ray, both are Quite nasty attacks, one melee, one ranged. So this is really annoying. Okay, so the fight is going to take place high up in the mountains. It's snow, it's windy, it's dark, and they have this really, really terrifying undead. Um, an undead that can, well, kill a level three or four character perhaps with one with one turn, just imagine two slams that hit uh, for um, an average of 50 hits. That's it. That's it for a level 3 character. So let's be cautious about it. Um, maybe um, send level 5 characters on the way. And uh, yeah, and have the Cold Light Walker attack. Two different people <laughs> at a time it's not to make it a tpk at once we are up in the mountains so one final idea there's bound to be some avalanche right it's just waiting for it so should the char player characters use something like a thunder step or anything that makes that creates a lot of noise Next turn, right after the turn of the player, an avalanche comes down. And everyone who stands there is... It's not a terrible avalanche, it's just a little annoying. Everyone who stands there is um, being in the condition of grapple. So they need a round to get out of it. And a typical grapple escape make it either athletics or um, acrobatics. So this should, be, should complicate the fight a little. But it's fine, Cold Light Walker is quite the boss fight in itself for a group of level 5 um, adventurers, level 5, level 4 could also work because the challenge ratings are really generous. So there you have it. Bullywooks um, 
catch the players for trespassing, want them to turn over the Titan, the Griffin snap away the necklace, player characters uh, climb up there and then get the task after some uh, conversation to kill this cold light walker. Once they do this, they get the necklace and may then decide whether they want to hand it over to the Bullywogs if they are still alive or just ask the Griffins to fly them <laughs> to their um, destination and just don't care about the Bullywogs at all and keep the necklace. So that's it. We need a title. The last thing, we need a title and this is a really tough one here. We have a Titan, we have treasure, we have an undead. Okay. Treasure in cold light. Thank you for watching and enjoy playing this one.